things conjure up more powerful visual imagery than a coral reef. Coral reef is kind of like the rainforest. It's a very diverse ecosystem where all the animals are kind of working together and it just happens to be underwater. That's pretty much what a coral reef is. It's like a living, breathing ecosystem. You find coral reefs around the equator and the reason for that is because you have consistent temperate waters, the temperature stays consistent and you have consistent photo periods for the animals. Coral has come from the Indonesia area, they come from like Fiji, Tonga, Bali, Jakarta. And Ohio? Todd Melman has been interested in coral for 15 years and opened a high-tech facility to grow coral last year. I guess I would call myself a coral farmer and I raise corals. I just thought it would be an interesting thing to do um, and I enjoyed watching my corals grow and, and dealing with them on a daily basis. It's like the one thing that actually kept my interest over all, the, all these years. There's a misconception in the, the hobby that corals take a long time for them to, you know, to develop and to grow into a reef. Well, that may be true, but for the coral actually to grow itself, it doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, some corals can actually grow and divide on their own by dividing by fission. You can actually cut them up and glue them to rocks and rubber band them to rocks. Divide them with, uh, on, by yourself to encourage them to grow. So just on a, on a weekly basis, I probably spend, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 hours propagating corals. Fortunately, Todd doesn't work alone. Todd's my husband. We're making the concrete disc that we put the corals on when they frag. So we use um, just cheap Dixie cups and um, we have a mixture of sand and gravel and um, concrete and then we just mix it up with some water and we put them in these little cups and then they dry after usually a day and then we pop them out and Todd uses that to put his frags on. But Todd's coral farm certainly got off to a rocky start. The biggest thing was probably that we had to be recognized uh, as being agriculture. Since this is a new type of farming, um, people didn't really see raising corals as actually farming. So that was, that was the biggest hurdle. Evidently this area where he has this facility is zoned agriculture, but the local zoning board wasn't aware that aquaculture is a form of agriculture. The traditional definition of aquaculture is growing something in water. And this is quite broad because we can grow plants in water. Um, corals, a lot of people think they're plants, but they're actually live animals. So we were able to look up some of the Ohio Revised Codes that does state that aquaculture is indeed a form of agriculture and have some letters written from our contacts at the Ohio Department of Natural Resources uh, stating that they believe that it was a, an aquaculture facility to actually raise corals and so we were able to help him in his permitting process. But you can understand the confusion because who would have thought about putting a saltwater coral farm in the middle of Ohio? A lot of people didn't really think that we could actually set up a coral farm in Ohio where we don't have a lot of sunny days. So, you know, that was, that was a real issue when we first started thinking about the project is what we we're going to do about lighting and keeping the animals alive during, you know, months like this where we don't have a lot of sun. And since there isn't a lot of people doing this around the country, and especially in this area, you know, I didn't have any kind of resource that I could go to and ask you know, for help because there wasn't anybody else doing it. People always ask me at work you know, if Todd took classes um, in college. And I think he took like a marine biology class, but it really didn't have anything pertaining to this. We both started off with a small aquarium, and um, he just kind of is self-taught. So that's kind of, you know, the internet back then, there wasn't much internet access. So we did a lot of reading and trial and error, I think, is pretty much how we figured out a lot of stuff. But yeah, it's kind of neat to be able to say my husband's a coral farmer. If you're planning on getting started in aquaculture, you really need to do a lot of research before you start. In fact, we really recommend starting small and then growing as your market expands and your knowledge expands. That's really one thing that Todd did with this facility. He actually started growing corals as a hobby and learned a lot about it on a small scale before he decided to ramp it up to an actual commercial scale. I never was really exposed to uh, fish tanks up until I got into college. 
And then that's where I met my wife, who helps me with the farm. We had a little 10 gallon tank uh, with freshwater fish, and then I saw a reef tank for the first time. Once I saw the reef tank, it's kind of like an addiction. You get involved in it, and you start watching things grow, and you want to learn more and more about it. And that's basically what happened. We ended up having a reef tank, and it just kind of tumbled from there. Corals really just, they're, they're mainly for aesthetics. As far as raising corals and selling them, we sell mainly to the public. However, there are actually people that are doing research on corals. Someday we might be able to find some particular coral that actually has a, a very useful medicinal purpose and we could start raising that in larger quantity to sell to somebody who's doing research. And Todd's efforts in Ohio have had quite an impact in regions of the world that most of us will never see. The last time I, I did research on the importation of corals from Indonesia and overseas, 80% of the corals that were harvested from the reefs from those areas was actually imported into the United States. It's a large number for the United States to be bringing in so much coral. One of the things that we know is that wild fisheries, corals included, coral reefs, are being depleted over time because of overfishing, perhaps development. Aquaculture can help reduce some of the stress on the wild fisheries. If you are raising corals in an aquaculture system, then you don't need to collect them from the wild. So aquaculture really can play an important part in relieving some of the fishing pressure on our wild species. Even with such benefits, facilities like Todd's are quite rare. Of the 225 aquaculture farms in Ohio, this is the only saltwater coral farm that we're currently aware of. People in the aquaculture industry are really excited about it because it just shows the innovativeness of what you can do with aquaculture. It shows that you can raise plants and animals far from their natural habitat in a safe, environmentally friendly way. I guess it's kind of unique having live corals growing in a greenhouse in central Ohio when they normally should be in our oceans at the equator. It's like having a little bit of a tropical paradise right here in central Ohio.